Chinese back therapy or something. So, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam ima ba'd. During this holy month of Ramadan, it's of course an obligation upon us to fast. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kutiba alaykum siyam kama kutiba ladina min qablakum la'alakum tatakun. Prescribed for you is fasting, similar to the way it was prescribed for those who came before you, in order that you would fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that you, had, you would attain God consciousness. And God, you know, fe- fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And with that, there are some, a mistake that some of our brothers and sisters make is those people who do not pray all year long and then they only pray and and fast the month of Ramadan. And some maybe to the extreme go to the extreme that they only fast the month of Ramadan and probably possibly don't even pray. Even Ramadan or just a couple of salats during Ramadan. So this is a very terrible mistake because the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wa sallam said Men taraka salat fakad kafara whoever has left the, the prayer has disbelieved. So, as a group of the ulama have illustrated that leaving the prayer is kufr. It takes you out of the fold of Islam. That the person who no longer prays is no longer a Muslim. They don't get buried with the Muslims. If they are married to a Muslim or a Muslima, that their marriage uh, will be invalid if, if they don't return to the prayer. And the other ahkam related to that. So may Allah protect us from leaving the prayer and, and admonish one another and advise one another. And in a hadith which shows us about the importance of praying the Salat in its time, or especially at the beginning of its time. This is related to the the time of the prayer, and that it is one of the most beloved deeds to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to pray your Salat on time. So what about the person who doesn't pray at all? They miss this fadila entirely, because they don't even pray. So we're, this is a situation for the believers that pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ask for his forgiveness and, and, and seek and thank him by coming to him in prayer, that they strive to pray in the beginning time of the prayer, you know, and not delaying your prayers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has, has uh, let us know that those are the characteristics of the munafiqeen and, and those people who are, who are lazy. You know, those people who are lazy and careless in, in, in coming to the prayer. An Abi Amr al-Shaybani wa ismuhu Sa'ad ibn Iyas qala haddathani sahiba hadha dar hadha hid dar wa ishara bi yadihi ila dar Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiyallahu ta'ala anhu qala sa'altu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ayya a'mal hibbu ila Allah azza wa jal qala salatu ala waqtiha Kultu thuma ay, kala bitter walidain, kala kultu thuma ay, kala jihad fi sabilillah. Kala haddathani bihinna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wast walo wastazad to hu lazadini. So in this hadith uh, of Sa'd ibn Iyas, who said, the person in that house, and he pointed to the house of Abdullah bin Mas'ud, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, told me that he, and he said, I asked the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which deed is the most beloved to Allah the Almighty? And he said, prayer at its time. Salat ala waqtiha. Then he said, then, then what deed? He said, being kind to your parents. Then he said, then what? And he said, Jihad fi sabilillah. Striving in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or fighting in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he said, and he, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also related to me, related this to me, and if I would have asked for more, he would have given it, given me more, meaning he would have given me more details if I had pursued the matter even more. So, in this hadith is many, many benefits that the scholars deduce from this hadith. And one of the benefits is the benefit which we are mentioning, which is prayer in its time. In its time and at the beginning of its time. That this is one of the, the best deeds, most beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that it is even 
better than being kind to one's parents and better than jihad fi sabilillah because jihad fi sabilillah is something in general which is fard al kifaya that this is a, an action which as long as a group of the muslims are doing it then the the sin is taking off the rest of the ummah the burden is taken off the rest of us unless jihad becomes legislated in a situation where it becomes fard al ain and so this shows us the importance of prayer of salat in general but especially salat in its time that this is such a great deed and so beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in accordance with the statement of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam also that this is one of the most beloved deeds uh, righteous deeds that you can do when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the believers illa alladhina amanu amanu wa amalu salihat those who believe and those who do righteous deeds well righteous deeds that includes salat ala waqtiha it also shows us that uh, that being kind and gentle to one's parents is also one of the righteous deeds that are beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that that is in the case of regardless of whether one's parents is Muslim or non-Muslim. That you should be kind and gentle and obedient to them as long as they're ordering you to do something which is pleasing to Allah, which requires obedience to Allah. As long as they don't order you to do that which is which differs with that which goes against the obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it shows us and illustrates for us the rights of the parents another uh, benefit that we gain from this hadith is it shows us that deeds are on different levels that some deeds are greater and more beloved to Allah than others so we should strive to uh, to do those deeds which are most beloved to Allah by doing the wajib, doing the obligatory obligatory du- duties like the prayer, the five times daily prayer. Do that. Make sure you're consistent. Never miss them and try to do them when in their time. And also, if you can pray the sunnans, those are the, the, the extra things that we do. But make sure you fast the holy month of Ramadan, which is the wajib. Do those wajib because those things bring us closer to Allah and as Allah narrates in the hadith uh, hadith al-Qudsi that he says subhanahu wa ta'ala is narrated by the Prophet sallallahu that a slave doesn't draw closer to me uh, except by doing those uh, those obligatory acts so the obligatory duties like the prayer and fasting the month of Ramadan and those things which are wajib upon us those bring us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then the extra duties they help to bring us even closer but do not fall short in your wajib and so it shows us that deeds have different levels and our iman has different levels and our sins have different levels there are major sins and there are minor sins there are major good deeds and there are minor good deeds there are uh, the people of sunnah they differ in their level of knowledge and their level of domestic bisunnah and their level of adherence to the sunnah. The people of bid'ah, they differ in their levels of innovation, that some people have bid'ah mukafara, which takes them out of the fold of Islam. And some people have less lesser bid'ah. Some people have minor acts of bid'ah, which are still major sins. So it shows us that all of those things have different levels. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us through those deeds which please Him. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad.